Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd and Souls, our friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Big Bold Tassel Crochet Basket. Working with thick yarn makes me kind of giddy. I don't know what it is. I think it's because I'm 12 years old in my head. Um, we're going to be using a thick crochet hook today that's a fistful. <laughs> and it's, sorry, here we go. It's a 16 millimeter size Q crochet hook today. We're going to be using Bernat Blanket Big bold and look how thick this is and it's a really fun yarn to be able to play with and you can see some really cool stuff so i'm going to be teaching this not from necessarily beginner's point of view but i'm going to give you some extra tips to keep you and uh, keep an eye on this so in the meantime what i'm going to do is strip off the ball a band what you have here is gray bold and uh, get your balls ready to go <laughs> and uh, we're going to get going and i can't even get my ball out <laughs> Let's begin this in just a moment. So as I begin, I have eight strands already pre-cut, just about yay so, so they're, they're about 12 inches long. And I'm going to be using this to show you where you need to stick your hook. <laughs> so, so let's get started. This is take number four. I'm having a hard time crocheting on top of my table. I need more space to move my hands because this is so thick. So we're going to start off with the slip knot. You might use two fingers or one, depending on how thick your hands are. Don't waste a lot of yarn because of the yardage of this. You want to preserve as much as you can. And then stick in your hook into that hole, into the stitch. And now we're going to chain two. So use the yarn like normal, just be a little bit more looser. So we have one and two, and we're officially ready for round number one. Okay, round number one. We're gonna go second chain for the hook, which is right back here. And we are going to place in eight single crochet. So just let that yarn just glide on its own. So we have one. And let the straggler just get trapped inside. This is two. Now, because I'm just starting out, I need more to grab onto, so I'm going to be a little bit all over the place until I have more to hang on to. And because I'm not used to grabbing things that are so thick like this, um, it's a little bit of a struggle for me, but I will overcome. You watch. This is three. Okay. And then four. And then five, six, seven, and if you're running out of space, just yank on it and pull it around, but don't pull it on to the point where you're going to break the yarn, but just pull it around so you can make room for that eighth one that is going to go in. And then we're going to attach it with a slip stitch to join it. So if you're not sure, count back the, the, the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is the eighth one right here. So because this yarn is so thick, you can actually stick your fingers. So you can um, hand knit and finger crochet with this yarn. And you're just going to join it with a slip knot, just like, or a slip stitch, just like that. So now we're going to begin round number two round number two you're going to start off by chaining one and then in each one of these stitches all the way around i know it's hard to see on camera but it'll be easier for you in person you're going to place in two single crochets into each one of those stitches and i have dogs so um my yarn hit the floor so i got dog hair on my stuff so it's part of the charm i suppose Okay, so then I go into my next stitch, and then I'm going to put two into that one too. So because this yarn is so thick, how thick is it? It's so thick that the project will go pretty quick. Okay, so I'm going to put two single crochets in each one of the stitches until I get back around. So put me on pause and just play with that, and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm now all the way around, and I've got two into each. There's a total of 16 single crochets i've already counted that off camera you'll be able to see yours a lot easier when it's in your own hands and you are going to slip stitch to the first single crochet and bring that con to conclusion so now we're going to move on to round number three next round number three 
we're going to just expand what this is, but we're, we don't have to really count at all. We just have to get ourselves around. So we just got to chain one to start and starting in the first one where this is attached to, you were going to single crochet. And then in the next one, single crochet. So all I need you to do for this round is just single crochet in every stitch until you get back all the way around. If you cannot tell when you're back around, just put a stitch marker into there. So if you're just grabbing one of those strands that I showed you earlier, you can put one of those there so that you can see it when you come back around. But in the next round, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with stitch markers more. And so you can just put a marker there just so you can see it so you know that that was the start of when you began. So please just single crochet all the way around for round number three. So just a little tip as I'm doing round number three, you notice how it's bowling away from you, so it's kind of sinking down like a bowl. Don't be afraid to kind of pop it in the other direction. It's easier to access the stitches. And when you do uh, single crochet, don't be afraid to pull up a little bit more slack than you normally would, just because it's easier to move your hook around. So if you're too tight, it becomes a problem. Okay. And so this yarn, because it's changing color on its own, is really kind of cool because I don't know how it's going to look at the end. Other than the main photo, but because I chose a different yarn, I don't know, a different yarn color. So I'm coming all the way around. Okay. And so this here is part of this. If you're not sure, you can count the tops of the stitches uh, to verify that. And in last round, it was 16. So there's 16 tops here. And then I'm just going to join it with the first single crochet. And you can see that's where my stitch marker was. And therefore, I'm just going to slip stitch and pull it together like that. So do pull it a bit tight so that the round gets joined and make sure that you do have your 16 before proceeding to round number four. So round number four, we're gonna start with those stitch markers that I had cut. There's already one in there. And so I'm gonna start off and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to put in one single crochet into the first stitch. And then in the next stitch, I wanna put two single crochet and that's gonna be the repeat all the way around. So we're gonna put two into that one. So after the second one is in, that stitch marker that I left here, because I'm gonna be able to tell, if you're not, use a different color here, but just move that stitch marker up to that stitch so you can see it. And this will help you determine the growth later on in the project. So then starting into the next one, so you have one by itself, and then two into the next, and on the second one, put in another stitch marker that you have Okay. And then you'll see this because every time you hit the stitch marker in the future, you'll be adding more stitches to make it bigger. And because you can see it with the stitch marker, it's going to be easier. So continue around. So one into the next and then two into the one after that. So I want to make sure that the yarn is flowing off the ball nice and easy so that it doesn't reflect any tension change within my project. So there's two in this one and just take that extra time and put in a stitch marker. You'll thank yourself later. So I need you to do this all the way around for this round number four. And I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. I'm coming up around on number four and I've got all my stitch markers in. So the last one will have two single crochets into the same stitch. Now, if you're not familiar with crochet, there's always a space that looks like it's a stitch, it's not. So then you're just going to attach it with a slip stitch to the first single crochet that you started with. So when you did this, all but the last one has the stitch marker in it. So you can kind of see when you're coming all the way around. So let's move on to round number five. So round number five, because I had you do the stitch markers, you're gonna see where it stitch has the extra stitch in it. So you're gonna start off and you're gonna chain one and the first two stitches that you see, the one that it's attached to plus this one, are both a single crochet. The one with the stitch marker is next and that one will have two 
single crochets in there. So just put the two in first, and then what I'm gonna to recommend to you is that on the second one, just take your hook out and just move that stitch marker up. And because it's only a certain distance, you can pull up on it a bit like that. Okay, so then that has your two. So the next two are by themselves. So one and two. And the next one has a stitch marker in it. So we know that's the one that will have the extra. So. So then this one's gonna have two. And on the second one, I wanna move that stitch marker up so I can see it again in the next round. So please do this all the way around for round number five. When you're coming back around, you're gonna have the two by itself. And then the last one has two into the same stitch. So I didn't mark that last one, as you know. And then you're just going to join it to the first single crochet that you have. Okay, we're gonna move on to round number six next. You're gonna notice that it's bowling down like this. Don't worry about it and just keep on going. Let's move on to round number six. Round number six. This is the last time we're gonna grow it, but it's gonna take a few more rounds after before it stabilizes and starts climbing up the side of your basket. So you're gonna start off and you're going to chain one and you were going to put three single crochets in a row. So we have one, two, and three. And look where the stitch marker is next. It's right where you want it to be. It's on that fourth one. So the ones with the stitch markers will have two in it again. So we have, so we have one and two. Okay, so then move that stitch marker. Actually, you know what, we're not growing it anymore. So you can leave that stitch marker right where it is. And we'll pull that out later. So we're gonna start again. So the next three in a row are by themselves. So we have one, two and three and then you got two into the next so i'm almost at a yarn already on ball number one so what i'm doing for you is that i'm going to place in the video description on how to secure yarn like this uh, using a, a thread and it's the best way to do it and i will link that in the video description as well as the pin comments as well on how to secure this kind of yarn so continue around in the same manner. So three by itself, two into the next, and you can leave the stitch marker right where it is. And this is round number six. I'm still on round number six. I'm still on round number six and I'm almost out of yarn, but I wanna use as much yarn as possible. And I happen to be on the stitch that needs two in there. So I just wanna get this a little bit shorter so that I can play with it. So I'm going to change it in the next one. So I'm gonna leave this much here. And then I'm just going to loop this yarn here don't have too much waste and just pull that through to finish that stitch and just leave this yarn to the inside of the basket if that doesn't bother you you can just leave it there but as i said there is a, a video in the pinned comments and description on how to finish off yarns like this if you would like to do that so then just continue along so we've now just jumped to ball number two here on round number six, and I'm gonna finish this round in just a moment. Finishing up on round number six, the last stitch has two into the same stitch. And then just join it, the slip stitch to the first single crochet. Okay, let's move on to round number seven next. Okay, this basket's gonna get easier now. And we're gonna start off by just chaining one and starting in the first one where the join is, you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And according to this, it has 40 single crochets, just in case you're gonna ask me that. So just single crochet all the way around for round number. I'm at the end of round number seven, and I know that because I am. So <laughs> I know that's not much of an answer. What I want to do though, is that because I'm starting to question myself because the stitches are starting to look similar, is that I'm going to pull a stitch marker out and leave it at the end of the round. So I know that when I see this, when I come back around, this is the end. 
So if that's something that may be helpful for you, it might, might be. So now I'm just gonna join with the slip stitch to the first single crochet. Okay, so now I know when I hit this, this is the last. Now moving on to round number eight. In crochet, there's always two loops that make up the stitch. Okay, so this there. So what we wanna do is that we wanna only play with the one loop here. This is considered the back loop because it's away from you. So the front loop here, this is to you, so you don't wanna use this one. So you wanna dive in between the two to capture that. And it's gonna create a bend in the material. So let's just get this through. So I'm going to chain one and I am going to just go into the back one only. So I'm not going into both stitches, so there will only be one really thick strand, and I'm going to single crochet. And this will cause the bottom of the basket to bend naturally. So just into the, in between the middle one there, just get the back loop only, and single crochet yourself all the way around on the back loop. And I'll see you at the end of round number eight. So I'm coming close to the end of the round and I can tell that by the stitch marker. And so I feel more confident that that stitch marker is in. Okay, so this is going to be my last one in. And then I'm gonna slip stitch to the top of the first one right here. So the next round is going to be the same round now until the basket is about 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to move that stitch marker up so I can see it again. And we're gonna cover this, but what I would probably recommend you do at this point, just stretch this basket. So just give it a good stretch out and just kind of lay it down and stretch. And you're gonna notice that the bottom of the basket is thicker than the top. Okay, so you're gonna have a good time doing that. And we're gonna do round number nine all the way to the end next. So the basket is a total of 11 and a half inches tall before you do the final round, but you can stop at any point. So if you just wanted a small little basket for your um, coffee table, this would actually be pretty cool too. So you could go right to the last round if you wanted to do that. So all the rest of the rounds are all the same now and I would recommend moving that stitch marker up. So just chain up one and just single crochet in the regular stitch. Now, and this will climb up the side of your basket. So please do the rest of the rounds and I'll show you how to do the last round in just a moment. So what I'm doing is that I'm keeping an eye on my balls and I'm getting close to the end. I've not hit my 11 and a half inches tall. So I wanna tell you that because I'm a little bit looser as a crocheter, so I use up more, um, uh, yardage per stitch. So I'm still happy with the height of this thing. You could buy more balls to get it to the height of 11 and a half, I guess you could, you could say. But I'm also, if you want to do that um, tassel, you're going to have to leave yarn left over for that, which I'm not going to do. So I, I will post you a tutorial for how to do a tassel. So on the very last round, once you're ready for it, this is what you're going to do, is that you're just going to chain up one and you were going to use the back loop only and you're just gonna slip stitch. And this is gonna create like a little bit of a brim on the top. So just through and through. So just going into the next back loop only and, and slip stitch. And you're gonna do this all the way around for your last round once you're ready for that. And I'll be right back in a moment. So when you get all the way back around, you can just slip stitch to the beginning slip stitch that you started with and that is the end of the story. So you can now officially cut this yarn. So the tassel would be attached right here because there's a little bit of a difference but nothing too crazy. And you wanna trim it long enough that you can weave in the end. So here's my tip for you. It's harder now but you can see all solid colors. So what you can do is just untwist this yarn and you're gonna notice that there was different plies. So there's three. So keep on twisting until they're all open here for you. And then as I mentioned, there's a video on how to secure this kind of yarn in. So if you would like just to do this, you could actually just put this through and just weave it in individually one at a time on the back side of this, all the loose ends so that you can do that. If you have really thick yarn and you wanted to treat it all together, you could have just done it the way that that video is showing as well with the thread. So you have to decide which way that you're going to go. So you're gonna pull through and lock it. So in this case, because the yarn is not too thick, you could just throw it through a tapestry needle and just weave it in on the end. 
Now, when you're doing your tassels, I'm going to provide another tutorial for that on how to make the tassel work. And what you would like to do, once it's all been secured, you're going to want to untwist the ends so that each one of these are opened so that you have more of a fluffy idea. And you can see that within the photograph as well. So this would be how you would do this one. You can remove all your stitch markers out now and you can enjoy your basket and everything is good to go. That's it for today and we hope you enjoy.